Hey guys, I sure command you today, Ray Shadow Legends. Welcome to another champion guide. This time on one of the best Void Legendaries, one of the best overall champions inside the game. It is Sacred Order Void Legendary Cardial. Uh, he's an amazing champ. What I normally do in these videos is I try to see, okay, what's a champion that I'm actually using, right? I try to start with champions that I actually use at least in one place where I'm trying out one place in the game. And then I make sure that there's enough requests in for those champions. Try not to share champions that nobody cares about, at least right now in this channel. And then... Uh, I try to mix things up a little bit. Not all rares, not all epics, not all legendaries, uh, especially void legendaries. Also, you know, I try to mix up the builds a little bit, kind of a mid game and end game for the most part here on these champion guides. This is going to be an end game guide because I'm going to show you my main uh, cardio. However, obviously, you can make adjustments depending on the gear where you are in your account. Okay. Just want to give you that. You've been forewarned. There are a handful, and I'll cover them a little bit in brief in today's video, but there's a handful, maybe about a dozen champions that I have built like to the nines and I'm not sure if it if it warrants rebuilding them to make it more kind of early mid game or if I should just share the end game and you guys can adjust based on where you're using the champion let me know if you have any feedback on that in the comments below I appreciate you guys speaking of appreciating you guys uh shout out to all of you there's a lot of cardio requests uh Warner 717 first void lego it's cardio congratulations what a great first void lego to pull we get buck just pulled cardio as well congratulations he has a Kaimar too avatar there uh we have a uh, DJ uh, DJ someone wants a card a cardial. We have Tristan looking for cardial. We have DJ looking for cardial. We have Sidico looking for a a guardial. Just pulled them on a recent Void 2X event. Uh, so did Gary. Man, a lot of people pull in cardial. So did Dale. Oh my word! Congratulations, Spencer, Gallant, the Valiant, John Blanco. Uh, what else we got? Scorned, man, a lot. As Reigns, Tristan, uh, Azurper, uh, Azurper again. Okay, so there's a lot of you guys. I could be here all day giving shout outs, right? We're already two minutes into the video. Anyway, guys, why is Cardio so good? Well, he does so much, right? Uh, let's look at this. First of all, aesthetically, man, I mean, he's got a great shield, but look at that pair of wings. Oh my goodness, those are some wings, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> He's up there on the wing tier list. He's also got the halo, uh, the halo. Hello. What, who sings that? I don't know. Anyway, he's got the big sword, too. My man is just, he's very ostentatious. Gold armor? Really? Uh, really cool aesthetics on this champion. On the A1, Cal the Wicked. Attacks one enemy, heals all allies, 7.5% of their max HP. Plays the true fear debuff for one turn. If the target is a champion from Demon Spawn, Undead Horde, or Knight's Revenant Faction. You hate the levels on this ability. The heal's not, uh, not massive either, but it's nice because it does synergize with the A or the passive we'll talk about in a bit. Angel Song. It's a, it's a full cleanse on a three turn cooldown with block debuffs for two turns with a revive on death for two turns. Uh, the revive on death is protected cannot be removed dude talk about an insanely good cleanse ability the cleanse and the block debuffs for two turns on a three turn with the revive on death that is again protected very good for the arena but it's really good i mean almost anywhere in the game right it, it, it's a great ability uh and then heavenly host it's an ally attack he's got an ally attack in his kit with the increased crit rate increased crit damage on all allies for two turns then he's teaming up as well with all allies to a target uh, to attack a target enemy decrease the cooldown of this skill by one turn if an enemy is killed from this attack which is often the case in the arena or in random waves which is really really nice essentially bringing it down to a three turn cooldown a lot of people forget about that reducing by one turn it's it's a really nice uh but it's kind of subtle addition to an already op kit fiend warden allies receive 20 percent less damage from champions in the demon spawn undead horror knight revenant faction Let's stop right there right it's a really, really good damage mitigator. Uh, even in like live arena, if you're if you're into live PvP, right? If you see the opponent is just stacking up on Knight Revenant, like I mean, there's a lot of good Knight Revenant champions. Jurgid the Breaker, uh, Undead Horde, I don't know, a Gorgarab, a, a Rodos. I mean, there's a lot of good nukers there too. Uh, Demon Spawn as well. I mean, bring him in, and you get 20 percent damage mitigation out the bat. That's really, really good out the gate, out the bat. Off the bat? Out the bat? Oh, man. Some things never change. I'm really bad at my, my analogies. Anyway, uh, whenever an ally attacks, there's a 15% chance. Make it a 20 
a 30% chance, excuse me, when booked to team up with them and join their attacks. Uh, so that's pretty cool. He can do the heal. As we said, it's not a great heal, but he is going to be executing that heal uh, 30% of the time when he's joining in. So it can add up the overall healage from this champion, right? He's always joining when Sissia attacks. He is a companion champion to Sissia Flame Tongue. Can only join an ally's attack once per turn, and he will not team up on ally attacks when they counterattack or blah, blah, blah. Okay. Also has speed and all battles by 19%. His base stats are money, good defense, really good speed, 106, and good HP as well. So there it is. Cardial, a great cleanser, an ally attacker, a block debuff, a revive on deather, a little bit of a heal, joining in on attacks, speed aura, he's damage mitigation, he's got it all, ladies and gentlemen, he's got it all. So uh, I'm going to show you how I have him built. I, honestly, the build that I have on this dude isn't like, it's, it's definitely end game, right? But... It's not insane in terms of, you know, he's a fairly, what I'm trying to say is a fairly easy champion to use. If we look again at his kit, he does have that true fear on his, on his A1, right? Against those particular factions. You know, I don't think personally just having, that's his only accuracy requiring ability in his kit. It's really up to you guys, right? Are you really going to try for that true fear? Uh, you know, it's 100% land rate against those factions, which is nice. I would love if it was irresistible, because that's the only reason you need accuracy in his kit. It's not, however. I'm not building him with accuracy just for that A1 personally, okay? Uh, you can see I went triple speed. For me... He does so many good things that I'm just going to keep it really basic with you guys. I want him to go as often as possible. I want him to be super fast. That's really what I care about, you know? He's not on any speed tune teams or anything. So in my eyes, sky is the limit in terms of speed on this champion. Because the more cleanses, the more block debuffs, the faster he is. If I can keep block debuffs up for two turns because he's that fast on everybody else on my team, awesome. The more ally attacks, fantastic, right? So I just want this dude fast and somewhat tanky. So that's exactly what I have here. 70k HP, 3,500, 319 on the speed. I don't care about crit rate. I don't care about crit damage on this champion. Sure, you can get some to min-max your damage depending on where you're using this champion. It's not going to hurt you to have a little bit more crit rate and crit damage. But the cool thing is, is really... All you need is speed, survivability, and resistance. Now, where I'm using this champion, resistance isn't pivotal. It's mainly PvE. I don't use Cardial in PvP, not because he's not great. He's an S-tier PvP champion in the arena. But frankly, I use Marichka as my, as my cleanser on most teams, and I use Mithrala as well. So it's kind of like an embarrassment of riches, if you will, or a dirty, dirty pay-to-win, however you want to look at it. I don't know. I, I choose the former, not the latter. That's just me. I don't know. Uh, so, guys, I don't use Cardial, right? I, I have him very fast and not a lot of resist because that is exactly what I need for the areas that I do use him, which is a lot in PvE. He's my PvE carry on my account, really, okay? Now, why would we want his resist high or higher really anywhere? PvP as well, but especially for PV or PvE as well, but especially for PvP because he's a cleanser with block debuffs. The last thing that we want is for Cardial to, you know, get or get a CC'd by whoever, a Ragash stun, an Astralon stun, a stun, an Abyssal Gaze from a Kaimar, right? We don't want him to get CC'd. So I would not be afraid of going really high on that resistance, especially if I was focusing on PvP with this champion. I think I've made my point. Just for an arena build, I would go higher on resist, and probably higher on defense. Those would be the changes. I'd sacrifice a little bit of speed, okay? Uh, however, we have him in a pretty good all-around build, just fast and tanky. We do have resistance on the banner. I already talked about the importance of resistance on this champion. We have defense with some more resistance on the amulet. We have HP on the ring. I don't even have everything ascended. I said it was an endgame build, but frankly... When you look here, I don't have everything glyphed out, and I don't have, uh, you know, I haven't really worked on any of these ascensions. So let's go ahead and see what we get here. Why not, right? HP percentage, fantastic. I just fa farmed some Sand Devil overnight, so I'm actually stocked up in oils for the first time in a while. I'm loving it. Uh, we get a little bit of defense. We have defense percentage on the chest. I think going HP and defense percentage on the chest and gauntlets are great for this champion. We have speed on the boots with speed as a ascension stat. 
in a speed set. It's the trifecta. You love it. You love it. He has 222 accuracy. We did just kind of run into some random accuracy stats here. So we are going to land that true for a little bit. Uh, and then other than that, just again, speed, survivability, resistance is kind of what we're looking for here. You can tell that the name of the game for me was mainly speed. I do want to say that the new set, if you are lucky enough to get your hands on any of this stuff, it's a, uh, you know, it's hard to <laughs> the righteous gear. It's really the forge pass type stuff, right? But right Righteous is very good. Probably the best set, I would say, in a vacuum on this champion. We're getting speed and resistance. We talked about how valuable that can be. So frankly, when I have a little bit more time on my hands, I might go in here and try to get at least one Righteous set on Cardial as well. Could probably do that in today's video, but you know we don't want to elongate it. Probably boring for a lot of you guys. You'll notice on my Blessing, I have Phantom Touch. Why would I go with a rare Blessing on a Void Legendary? Simple, because he's an absolute carry on my Fire Knight team, and I really want to get that extra hit on that A1. That's really a weakness of his, only one hit for that particular dungeon, especially on Fire Knight Hard 10 or whatever, which is, again, where we're re really uh, leaning on this champion heavily. So I really want that Phantom Touch on all the champions there. Now, other than Phantom Touch, there's a, a lot, number of different ways you can go. I like Lightning Cage on this champion, right? He's getting a, a right on a three star right now, which we have him. Uh, gains a lightning orb stack whenever an enemy receives a buff or has their turn meter filled. Uh, whenever a champion, uh, when activated, lightning orb stack randomly protects one other active buff from being removed, stolen, or transferred. Okay, obviously his revive on death is already protected. That's great, but I also want the block debuffs protected as well. And again, he is bringing uh, the increased crit rate and increased crit damage as well but that's on all allies uh not himself he's not a massive like damage dealer type champion okay but anyway those would be the options personally i love lightning cage i love uh let's see what else would i go with on this champion i wouldn't go with um Temporal Chains because of the resistance issue, nor would I go with Polymorph for the resistance issue, nor would I go with Brimstone. Uh, I would probably go Intimidating Presence or Lightning Cage if I didn't have Phantom Touch personally. Uh, Masteries on this champion. We did go with a very, very just kind of old school, traditional support damage dealer type uh, mastery selection here. Offense literally just coming down, crit rate, crit damage, and hug in the left hand side down to War Master. And then the support side of things, trying to get a little bit more bang for our buck with the healage lay on hands healing savior coming down to merciful aid lasting gifts is great on this champion as well as uh as spirit haste we did pick up lore of steel because he has three speed sets on him lore of steel does also work with righteous so if you want to go that route go ahead and invest in lore of steel the other set that i would encourage you guys to consider for cardial is of course say it with me the set that i say on every great champion in the game uh relentless right so relentless specifically is very very good on cardial as well getting those extra turns for the same reason that we want them very very fast so that's the build those are the masteries those are the skills uh i think that we covered everything let's go ahead and see where i use this dude right cardio 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 you are good now in terms of the speed again i know the speed is super super fast high and and, and and likely most of you are not going to be able to reach that threshold right but i do want to uh you know uh, reiterate that that's not required it's not this team is not speed tuned or anything like that my philosophy is my best champions i want to make them as fast as possible and less otherwise speed tuned to be slower so that's what i did with him uh this is the squad here i've shown this team before i'm not sure about on this channel but on my main channel i have i want to show you the team setup really quickly here uh cardio's coming in you'll notice extra speed on him because of my great haul okay just take that into consideration uh Cardial is really basic. We're not going to use Angel Song or Heavenly Host in the second round. And then we're going to open with Heavenly Host, excuse me, open with Angel Song and then prioritize the Ally Protect on the third round. Valkyrie is going to be kind of the same thing. I'll, I'll really quickly show you just in case you want to make a team kind of like this. He's not going to use his Blight. He's going to open with his A3. Cardial's not going to use his Sealed Fate on the last round. And Cold Heart on the last round is only going to use her A1 and Heart Seeker. So this is Fire Knight, Heart 10, Team. Let's get it, guys. Let's get it. I'll come back to you when we actually get to the Fire Knight because the first two waves actually take a long time and they're really boring. All right, guys, here we go uh, at the Fire Knight. 21 ticks on this shield. 
So as you guys can see, the way this team works is Cardio's going to go. He went. He started with the uh, revive on death. You can see is protected on everybody. The big counterattack comes in, and now you'll see you, we're going to go ahead and chip that shield down, right? So everybody goes in with their counterattacks. And he goes in with the ally attack, right? So everybody's going in, and immediately that shield goes down. That's the power of uh, Foley and Coltart, right? With all of those hits on their A1s inside their kit. So now at that point, and plus the increased crit damage, increased crit rate, really helpful. Uh, increased crit rate, especially even himself, it helps him out a little bit because he's nowhere near 100% crit rate. So it's nice that he has that in his kit. Moreover, the increased crit damage, really beneficial, especially on like a Heart Seeker ability. So that shield is back up, but hey, now it's down. Cold Heart's also bringing that heal reduction there. So you'll see, just look at the tick on, like, compare, like, I don't know, a Foley who's at maybe a 210 speed or something. I don't know, 220 in that neighborhood, right? Compare the uh, the turn meter fill of cardio and just having them this fast and just how much again another ally attack in there. Now that one ideally probably would have went down before. Before the Fire Knight's shield went down instead of while it was down. But hey, it still results in more damage. We refresh the heal reduction as well. It's nice. So you got to be kind of careful. But that's why we have Valkyrie on the team too, right? She's going to make sure that she uses that shield. And hey, if the Fire Knight comes in here and kills somebody right now, we of course do have that protected revive on death. So this is the team. It's not the fastest team in the world. But hey, I think for my money, I don't think it's even close really. I think the Fire Fire Knight Hard is the most difficult dungeon out there in the game. Uh, what about you guys? Would you put uh, Shogun or Sand Devil, Iron Twins, or Ice Golem Hard in the conversation? Very curious. Maybe I should have a, uh, a poll, a community tab poll on that. It's actually a pretty good idea, Ash. I don't mind if I do. Be on the lookout. So the nice thing about this team is, I want to say it's 100% success rate. I may have lost and didn't realize it at one point, uh, but I've never, I've been running this team now for a month or two, maybe two months, and I can't recall ever dying. Uh, once in a blue moon, if 15% if crit rate on Fyro, the Fire Knight or whatever, uh, once in a blue moon, he might kill Coldheart, right? You can see that she's like the squishiest, obviously, out of everybody. But even in those circumstances, one of two things will usually happen if that, if that does happen. Number one is she'll have a protected revive on death on her. He'll pick her right back up, right? Uh, not, especially with him being so fast, you know? Uh, helps keep that up more often than not. Lasting gifts obviously can proc for three turns as well on that revive on death. It's really, really nice. Uh, number two is, is as long as that heal reduction is up, we will be able to still win the fight, right? So here he goes. And it just happened. It just perfect. <laughs> I mean, not perfect, but it just happened and it wasn't up. So it does prove kind of to my point earlier that sometimes cold heart does die and it's not the end of the world. Her main job, obviously the quadruple hit on the A1, but also that really valuable uh, heal reduction for this particular boss. So all we need is a few more hits or one more hit. Maybe we can even get it down right now. It's not the cleanest run. It's pretty sloppy, but we still got the job done and I'm always here to give you, you know, a real result. Sad thing is, is look at the champions required here. I mean, I got a plus four Tomb Lord, plus a plus four Foley. Coldheart, which speaks to how good Coldheart is, a rare champion just chilling with all these OP legendary champions, right? And all that for a speed boots. Uh, it's a five star, but it does have HP percentage and it's a shield set. Eh, I'm going to sell it. I'm going to sell it. I'm not going to use that. I don't use shield that much at all after bolster. All right, guys, so Phantom Shogun's Grove. I could sit here and show you all the other areas I use as champion as well. Uh, frankly, there's a lot, right? Eternal Dragon. We have uh, 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 Celestial Griffin right now. I'm using him in two Doom Tower areas. There's so many areas in the game this guy shines. Uh, I don't know how you guys feel about uh, Shogun. I asked you a little bit earlier about the dungeons, what's most difficult. It's weird, man. I think it's really corny. I don't know if a better strategy has evolved out there, right? But to me, it's about like throwing in as many cleansers as possible, really. A Geomancer and as many high awakenings as possible, right? It's a super pay-to-win dungeon. 
at its core because of the Purge of the Shadow, right? There's also Awakened Weakness where you do damage mitigation and more damage depending on your level of Awakened, right? But it's really the Purge of the Shadow. Whenever an Ascended Champion uses a skill decreases the shade counter, it's decreased according to the Awakening level on the Champion who used the skill. So basically my strategy is super corny, but I basically only stick high Awakened Champions in there. Uh, I mean, even if I had a rare, like a Relic Retender, someone with a nice cleanse, at a high awakening, I would use her, right? Uh, so that's like the only reason I have a Mausoleum Mage in there is because he's a six-star awakened. I think I have Mithrala, I want to say, at a five-star as well awakened. So, I mean, the name of the game is a lot of cleansing. Revive on Death can be handy at times. Ally Attack is certainly really handy as well uh, for the Shade Counter specifically. But, I mean, that's that's about it. It's Again, I feel like it's kind of a cheesy dungeon, but... Cardiel is a huge part of my team uh, here, you know? Again, I could show you the other areas, but I feel like we just making a, a 40 minute video just for the heck of it. Even though I love chilling with you guys and enjoy my time making this content, I don't think we need a 45 minute let's look at the Eternal Dragon on the ally attack. TLDR, he's my favorite PvE ally attacker out there. Uh, maybe even just flat out ally attacker. I do love Farrakhan and the Fat. I love the Fat Man as well. But Cardio's right up there. He just brings so much to the table other than just his ally attack, which is why I love him. And frankly, as I mentioned, Eternal Dragon and Griffin uh, specifically, but there's more. They're just so, ally attack is so good against them. A champion like Fenax or a Turvold, whoever you got with those hard hitting A1s, you just put them on the same team as the uh, ally attacker and that's it really. And that's the beauty of Cardio. Uh, so, you know, again, 600,000 in the heels, not too bad. Uh, let me go ahead and I'm not going to show you the runs, but I will show you the teams that I use uh, for those two bosses. So... Eternal Dragon, this is the squad. We got Ninja, Geo, Trunda, and Duchess. Not the fastest uh, team in the world. I'm actually the slowest team in the clan, even though the clan is super OP. But hey, the fastest team in the clan. I need to put Acrisia and Nut in the team is what I need to do, right? Uh, Layla Rules, aka Harrier, aka changes his name every other day. Uh, he is, uh, shout out to Layla Fox, by the way, great content creator. He is running Cardial on the number one team, right? Uh, and that's final boss on Doom Tower Hard. Uh, I use him in the Griffin sometimes. Right now I'm using Longbeard, but it's kind of interchangeable there. I think my main team, I do use him instead of Longbeard. Either way, though, uh, nice to have an ally attack against these options, guys. That's going to do it for the video. Hopefully you've enjoyed the guide. Keep the guide requests coming. Send us some positive vibes. Again, your way to end off today's video. And as always, take care, guys.